Good morning everybody and welcome to our memorial service this morning. We're going to first of all uh, open with a song and then if you would bow your heads we'll open with a word of prayer. So here's our opening song. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come now today as we begin uh, our memorial meeting and we ask that you would be with us all, that you would open our hearts today and open our minds to the things that we hear. We will hear the word explained and we will hear all about your son, even Jesus Christ. And it is in that man and in his life and in his death and above all the resurrection that we remember today that we have our hope. We are so thankful for it. Please be with us today as we sit down and take this time to remember you and your plan that you have for us as called by the life of that man, even Jesus Christ. Amen. In our daily readings from Mark chapter 3 this morning, the opening verse says this. It says, And Jesus entered again into the synagogue, and so the, the scene we have before us is that Jesus is now in the area of the Sea of Galilee and he's up in Capernaum. We see that because what we find is in Mark chapter 1, we read these words in verse 21. And they, that's being Jesus and his disciples, went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue. And so in Mark chapter 1, we're introduced to Jesus being in the synagogue. In verse 39, it also says, And Jesus preached in their synagogues throughout all the area of Galilee, which is, of course, where Capernaum is and where Jesus is. And so now, as we come into Mark chapter 3 for today, Jesus is again entering into the synagogue. And so the scene we have is Jesus coming and going, and he would have been noticed and well known 
for coming into the synagogue and being around that area. Now, what's going to happen is, in a couple of days' time, we're going to come to Mark chapter 5. And in, in Mark chapter 5, what we find is in verse 22, that we're told that, behold, there came a ruler of the synagogue. So, so one of these rulers of the synagogue in this, in this area of Galilee in Capernaum is a man named Jairus. And of course, we have this story of Jairus who has a daughter and she's very unwell. And it says this, it says, and he besought Jesus greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and that she may live. Now, what's really interesting about this story is that Jesus would have been observed by Jairus during all these times of coming and going, but he's a, he's a Jewish ruler. He's been ruling in the synagogue under the law, under the law of Moses, under the law of the Jews. And the problem that he has is that under the law, there's certain restrictions that apply. And what we find is that those restrictions are going on in the background. Look what happens. We find that it says in verse 24 that Jesus went with him and much of the people followed him. So he's on his way to the house of this man, Jairus, to, to heal his daughter, who is a, is a young girl. And what we find is that on his way, it says that a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. So this woman has been bleeding for 12 continuous years. And when we look at the records in Matthew and in Luke, we get this picture of this woman. Now, because she is bleeding, it means that she is unclean. And so this woman would have been an outcast amongst all the people in the area. So here you've got Jesus coming and going to the synagogue, but this woman, she would not have been done that. She is not welcome in the synagogue. And remember what the synagogue represents. The synagogue represents salvation. It represents the house of God. And this woman, under the law that Jairus, this rule of the synagogue, she is not permitted to go into the synagogue. And so this story has two parts to it. We have this man, Jairus, who is the ruler, and he has a sick daughter. And we're not told here in Mark how old this little girl is. But what we do find is that when we go into the Luke record in Luke chapter 8, we find that his little girl is about 12 years of age. And so we have this remarkable situation where we have a woman who is unclean, who is unwelcome for the whole life of this 12 year old girl. And we're told again in the records that it's his only daughter, his only child. And of course, what happens is this woman interrupts the process of Jesus going to this man's house to basically save his daughter. You see, under the law, this girl, this little girl, could not be saved. She is about to pass into the article of death. She's going to die, and there was no way that that law, that this man, that, that, that this father, this child, was a ruler over in the synagogue, there was no way that that law could save this little girl. Nor could it save this woman. And this woman, she would have had to have totally humbled herself she would have covered herself to be unseen and what she's going to do is she's going to approach jesus from behind and she's going to touch the hem just the very bottom part of his garment and the reason she's going to do that is because she has faith the the antidote to the law and so this woman she creeps up behind. She sneaks up behind. 
No doubt she would have been covered with a hood. She wouldn't want to be recognised, because if she's recognised, she would have been pushed to one side, she'd have been an outcast. But she comes up behind the Lord Jesus Christ and touches his garment. And Jesus, he immediately knows that, that, that some virtue, some essence of himself has, has left him and he turns around and he, and he looks and, he, and, he, and, he, and there's, a, there's a crowd of people. That, they're all pressing against him. It's this huge crowd. And he says, who touched me? And the, and the disciples look at Jesus and say, well, what do you mean? Everybody's touching you. We're all touching you. We're all pushing. Everybody's trying to touch you. What do you mean by somebody touched me? And Jesus says, no. Somebody has deliberately touched me in faith and of course the woman then reveals herself and you can imagine the the shocked look on on the people who would would know of her who perhaps would recognize her but especially Jairus because he's a ruler of the synagogue he was there to provide comfort and love and compassion to the people because the commandments of God are to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor but she's been an outcast and you can almost imagine his frustration about this woman interrupting the procession to to get to his daughter it would be almost like yes come on Lord 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 we've, we've, we've got to heal my daughter because this woman she's unclean She's unsavable. And Jesus stops and performs that miracle. And it has a, a huge impact on Jairus because the Lord Jesus Christ says these words in, in chapter 5 and verse 32. And he looked around about to see her that had touched him. But the woman, fearing and trembling and knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. See, it's, it's our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our actions and our works can't save us. We are condemned under the law but through faith we are saved and while he yet spake there came from the the ruler of the synagogue's house the news that your daughter has just passed away don't don't bother jesus any longer she's dead and jesus turns to this to this ruler to this man this father and he says to him, as he says to us, don't be afraid, only believe. Through faith, this man had to believe that all things were possible. He had observed Jesus coming and going and teaching and preaching and perhaps doing miracles during those days preceding this time. And now comes the moment of truth. Does he have the faith to truly believe? And the question is, brothers and sisters, as we come to the table of the Lord this morning, do we have the faith to truly believe, to believe with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind, that when we come to our Lord Jesus Christ and when we come before our Heavenly Father this morning to break bread and to drink wine, to remember his suffering, that in faith we are saved. And so let us now offer thanks for the bread that our Lord Jesus Christ broke in that upper room with his disciples. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you now to praise you and to thank you for this bread, the symbol of your son's broken body. We come to you, loving Father, in faith. We come to you in belief that even though, loving Father, 
we are sinful sons of men. Through our faith and through our relationship with you and with your son, we know and we believe. We have faith that we can be saved. And so, loving Father, as we partake of this bread, we ask that we might be strengthened to be more like your son, to live our lives patterned on his example. And so as we take this bread, the body of your son, we pray that we'll be more like him in the days that remain until his coming. We offer our thanks through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so it's recorded that Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Before he partook of the cup, he offered another word of prayer. Let us follow his example. Loving Heavenly Father, again we come before you to continue our praise and our, our worship and our acknowledgement of thee, to thank thee, loving Father, for this wine, the symbol of your son's shed blood. And we pray, loving Father, that as we partake of this cup, that we'll reflect on our lives and recognise and acknowledge before you our sins, to confess, loving Father, that we have made mistakes, to own those mistakes, loving Father, but to plead for your mercy and for your grace to wash us clean in the blood of your Son. And so we have confidence and faith in these things, loving Father. And so we praise you and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, loving Father, for your great love and for your compassion. And we do so through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And Jesus says that this cup represents the new covenant, the shed blood that washes away our sins. And he told us that he won't drink of that cup again until he drinks it new with us in his Father's kingdom. There is a certainty of the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ where he also will drink with us anew in his Father's kingdom. Well, thanks uh, very much, everybody, for joining with us again this morning. Uh, we trust and pray that uh, you'll continue to be able to care for each other and keep yourselves safe uh, during these difficult times. Keep, uh, keep in touch with each other, but at the same time, also keep up your social distancing and, and keep your hygiene and, and, and keep your masks at the ready. Um, pray it will be soon that we're able to meet again in person and, and enjoy each other's company and fellowship. Uh, but until that time, uh, my prayer is that, that God will be with you and that God will keep you safe. So we're going to close our, our meeting now with, a, with first of all with a song and then with a prayer. So until we meet again, God be with you and God bless you. Take care and bye for now.
Mighty God in heaven, we uh, come before you now. We come before you as our Father, as uh, our Father. We thank you, Lord, for talking to us this morning through our brother. We ask that you may help us to take these words into our heart and then into our minds as well. Lord, we can see that the will of man is failing. That's why we are constantly praying for your will to be done on earth. We pray that your kingdom may soon come, a kingdom which will remain forever, a kingdom which shall be not left to another kingdom. We're looking forward to that glorious day, a glorious day where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, where there will be enough food for everyone. As we can see the surge of this uh, virus where people are suffering and they go to bed without food and then they uh, suffer from different illnesses due to this pandemic. That's why we can't wait to see our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to see him face to face, to take away our pain, to take away our sorrows. If it's possible, may you send him soon now. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen. 